Of course, first of all, about the macroeconomic situation, we see that uh, the economic growth and the, the, the prospects of it is uh, rather positive. We see also that there is a lower energy prices, uh, also lower inflation. Of course, we know, and that's also something that is, of course, that we, we keep need to keep in mind that inflation, and, and that's definitely the core inflation, is, is still rising and still quite high. Um, and that's also the reason why I think that we should, of course, discuss also the differences that we see uh, among, uh, among member states, and that's also the reason why we have this discussion here uh, today. Other interesting uh, topic, of course, is the fiscal guidance for 2024. We know that we have to deactivate the general escape clause. Um, that also means that we come in a transition period, in transition period in which, of course, we also need to look to the support measures and make them more targeted, something that we also did in Belgium. In Belgium, we actually said, OK, we're going to uh, review and reform our uh, taxes on the energy uh, bills uh, is something that we worked on and it's already also uh, decided in, in government and in parliament and voted in parliament. And of course, there will also be a discussion and that will be more for tomorrow about, of course, the, the, the stability and growth pack and the economic governments, um, how we see that, how the, the, the review of that. Uh, of course, debt reduction is still very important, but also linked with um, what we will see with reforms, what we will do with, with investment. Investments, something that I also did last week. I, I, I put a uh, tax reform on the table for our country, making uh, working more interesting, making the difference between working and not wor working also uh, more more clear and, 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 and bigger, which is of course also uh, very important. And I hope, of course, that tomorrow or after tomorrow, uh, the Commission can come forward with some uh, legislation for that uh, economic governance review. You said about inflation in some countries it's sinking and others it's still rising in Austria for example could that be a problem for Europe in the future well at least we should discuss of course we also see differences in, in inflation I also remember last year that in some countries more Eastern European countries that the inflation was close to 20 percent while in other countries it was uh, five to ten percent we also see today some uh, differences uh, between or among m member states for example, Belgium is the second lowest in the, in the European Union, probably due, uh, for example, to the automatic indexations that we have. Um, but that's something that we need to discuss to coordinate our, our measures that we, that we can take at that point. Minister, on the collapse of uh, Silicon Valley Bank, is there any exposure of the Belgian market system to this particular bank? Are you concerned about the risk of contagion? Well, we of course evaluate the situation, we monitor the situation hour by hour. Uh, for now, we have no indications that there is any risk that there is an impact on our Belgian, uh, on our Belgian banks. Uh, but of course, as I said, uh, we have uh, or we monitor it very closely. We also have, of course, a, a very clear European and Belgium uh, regulatory framework in which we, well, we, we know what the, what the situation is there. And that also, of course, helps us uh, to keep uh, to keep trust in the, in, the, in the banking system. And on the uh, fiscal guidance and the possibility to uh, trigger excessive deficit procedures in spring 2024, is this something that uh, Belgium would support or do you think that it would be better to postpone it to the new uh, framework? Well, I think it's important and that's also the reason why I think that that new framework is so important, the, the, the framework of the economic uh, government's uh, review is, is, is so important because we have the choice going back to the old rules where we are going to open the excessive, excessive deficit um, procedure again for almost all countries or go to new more realistic rules uh, rules where we also take into account reforms and, and, and investments and that's definitely something that we need to uh, that my uh, I, I, I actually feel a lot to go to that for the, the, the second option the option where we go to more or new realistic uh, uh, rules. So, so the three and the sixty percent rule should be changed. Sorry, the three percent and the sixty percent rule on the fiscal rules that could um, should be changed in your opinion. No, 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 not at all. That's definitely not what I'm what I'm saying. I also don't think that that is the the the, the, the case. But of course, the proposal that is now on the table, where the debt uh, reduction uh, that we go for is not only based on just the, the, the budgetary rules, but also look taking into account the multi the annual uh, approach uh, and also an individual approach or a more individualized approach where we also look and take into account the reforms and investments that are done by member states is a very interesting position that also is very clear in the communication of the Commission and I hope that tomorrow we will also support 
that communication and that the Commission can come forward with, with uh, legislative uh, measures and, and, and text. So just to be clear, Minister, you will be in favour of postponing the EDPs to the next uh, to the new framework? Well, for, for me it's uh, definitely clear and we are now with the fiscal guidelines for 2024, we are in a transition period. Um, that also uh, think, and I also think that it's important that we move forward with the economic governance review in which we have new, more realistic rules. Thank you very much.